Okay, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the September 18th work session of the Salisbury City Council. Uh, we have several items on the agenda today. Um, I guess what we'll do is uh, we will skip the chiefs. Chief will be here in a couple minutes. Uh, we'll go to the fee change for service process. Okay, we're ready, Susan? We're going to you. Yeah. Good afternoon. How are you? Okay. This is a draft legislation to add a processing fee for municipal infractions. This is a fee that. Excuse me. Could you? I'm um, sorry. Put that in front. Thank you. I got carried away, Kim. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. This is a fee that would allow us to add a $50 fee on to every time to an owner every time we have to issue a municipal infraction. And this is a fee that we basically have been covering ourselves every time we issue, issue a citation. And Mark and I, I think, need to work out a few details with that because right now the court, the court processing, every time we issue a municipal infraction, we have to have that municipal infraction served by summon server. That cost us fees out of our own pocket to pay that summon server. That fee is $35. That is our service to have that citation entered into court in, through district court. Is this when it goes to court? Not when you, like if you go up to somebody's house and you issue a, a citation that one of the housing inspectors does. This is once it's beyond that? This is once, they're, once they do not comply. Okay. Not a corrective action letter. Okay. This is when they do not, when they, their time has passed and they have not complied and we issue a citation. Okay. That citation is actually have to be served personally if they are local. Okay. If they are not local, it's sent certified. Okay. There's actually a spot on the citation they have to sign that they received it. Okay. So this is the, this is the fee for the act of serving the paper. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that is required by Maryland law. Mm -hmm. And that's Maryland law through district courts. Okay. It has to be served. Um, so in this, I think that Mark and I, we just need to change a little bit of language because, and Mark can explain why that language needs to be changed for that, is that's what, that's what the intent of this, le, le, this ordinance is to recoup that because what we're doing is we're having we've had an increase in citations being issued. We are having to pay that cost for each citation and we're not recovering that fee from the defendant what's, at all. What's our annual cost? It used to be $5,000 and it's, last year was probably about 8,000. And I anticipate this year it's gonna be more. So we need to, we need to change the law so that the defendant is actually paying for that. And I searched what other municipalities are doing and anybody who issues any summon service, I, ish, I researched this online, anybody who issues any kind of summons fee citation, they all have the receiving party pay that summons fee, <coughs> all of them. So if I was issued one, I'd have to pay that fee. What? I guess the other piece goes to if it goes to court and and it's and if they find in favor of the defendant, do they still have to pay it or do they get reimbursed? As far as mm -hmm. no, if you if you go to court, you you're only responsible for the costs if you lose. 
So if, you, if you're successful and, they, and the city is determined to be incorrect in the issuance of the citation, then the person won't be responsible. Mm -hmm. For the $50 fee. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, and, and, I, and see that the, the way this is now worded, it, it didn't make it clear that, that what, I saw that in the title that you mm -hmm. talked about, service of process, but the way this is worded, it doesn't specifically say service of process. Yeah, I we, agree. We may not even need this ordinance because of the current district court rules and the current state legislation that entitle that a prevailing us party to, to recover their actual costs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, why we're not recovering them now, I can't answer that question, but certainly I think some things can be adjusted that we would be recovering those. Okay. I think what we would need to do is now at the court we show proof of service that we've served the individual, but if we can show proof of service along with an affidavit from the process server that my charge for this is $35 that we can then recover that. I don't think we can recover an amount greater than what we're actually charged for the service. In other words, it's not supposed gotcha. to be, right. mm -hmm. it's supposed there's to not supposed to be a profit, it's supposed to be mm -hmm. an out-of-pocket cost. Okay. But sense. I think that's the way it works. We may, we may be fine if we just change some of the procedures now and file the appropriate affidavits. And that's fine because all, all my... Um, you want the money. All I want is just because we're we're increasing ha have many citations we're having to write, right. and I just don't want to have to keep coming out yeah. of our out of our no, coffers. We need to make sure that the people who are receiving them are paying for them. Understood. And this is only after it's going to go to court. If it's rectified and everything they, is fine, they won't have nothing, to. There's nothing there. Exactly. So my question to you would be, from my personal experience, <laughs> all those ones that are out there that we cannot find that end up being over and over and over again properties that we are trying so hard to address. I, I recognize you want to be able to recoup the fee of the person who's got to travel to Pennsylvania or travel somewhere far away to serve these people, to serve people. But how often do we actually get anything out of those, out of those chronic ones that if 210 East Isabella, the gentleman is incarcerated. If that person lives out of state, actually out of the three local counties, it's sent certified mail. Okay. Because I'm not going to pay that much for to have a summon server go that far. I'm not going to pay any more than right. $35. The one we had in Snow Hill where we went to the house and somebody said he doesn't live here. We went to the house and it was him and he said I'm not him. We went to the house. I, are we talking fifty dollars each time? It, he, they charge one to, one fee of thirty five. They'll go they'll go multiple times to locate someone, but only charge one fee. So if, if he has four addresses to try, they only charge one fee. And, and if we can prove that someone is evading service in the way you just described, mm -hmm. lying about their identity, we can have the court order that they well, can. So when you come up with a way to prove that, then yeah. it'll make. Mm -hmm. We've done it. It's, it's happening of the world. Mm -hmm. um, how much money do you think this will generate? Well, the annual fee, she's, the annual collection was about eight grand. Right. Yeah. So we're you're hoping. I, I think that it'll definitely eight grand, if not more, because we have had to issue more citations. Even this year, we've had to so far issue more. But we're we're writing. We're writing fewer infractions, but we're having a higher number of ones that are going to court. Is that? No, we're writing more infractions. We're f we have found a significant number of delinquent owners just this year. More infractions. Then let me ask, let me ask the question this yes. way from a monetary <clears throat> standpoint. Is this $50, this $50 fee going into a line that is specifically for paying of these people to do it. Because what I don't want, because we doubled the fee, we doubled the registration fee, we doubled the, all of those in the last, in the last two years. What I don't want is that going into the general fund. If that is specifically for delinquent owners who we have to go to court with, then I think that that should have to stay. I mean, I know it's all gonna come out of the, if Keith Cordray were here, he'd, he'd say, "Well, it comes out of a different, <coughs> well, comes out of a different bucket." Mm -hmm. But then, at the end of the year, if it it's still there, it all goes back goes into the same, the same bucket. So, but the, to me, yeah, it's either the checking the checkbook payment would or the go into that line that it, you pay out would, of that account, right? You're talking about a revolving account. 
it would come right back in and we would have to work that out with Keith. I just, that would be just my suggestion because I, I understand the cost to go tell, tell people that they've got to come do what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, with the doubling of the fee and the doubling of the registration and all the costs that all of the things that we have imparted into this particular area, I just want to make sure that it isn't going back into the general mm -hmm. fund. It, or at least be able to give us the number. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I want, just want to make sure that we all heard from Mark is that we may not be able to charge. We have to, I think our limit might be, based on what I heard, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the so, max we are allowed is what we are billed. Right. The, okay. Because that was my area of concern yeah. because I was losing my moorings because it seemed like there's a procedural mechanism already in place where we can recoup these funds. Right. And basically what you guys are asking for at this time is notification. And what you would need an ordinance for is if we're charging amount that's beyond the expense. Right. Do our and I'm not sure if convince me why we would want to charge something beyond the expense. I, I would not support support mm -hmm. something beyond. I, and that's why I'm saying convince well, me. Well, I think Mark mm -hmm. said earlier that it's Maryland law. Law, you yeah. Can't. Yeah. The can't go beyond. But, we're, but also that's, that's from the thing our, to be researched because it right. seems like we're almost at a point where it's premature to have this conversation mm -hmm. because we need to explore the yeah. procedural mechanism well, that's already in place. Yeah. Well, Mark, I've got on my desk, I've got the easily I can grab it and give it to you tomorrow. It's just the state code where it says that we have to have them served. Oh, yeah. No, so I, I'm, I'm aware of that. Yeah, so we it, can. It was just this, this was worded sort of generally instead of very specifically, mm -hmm. as you explained today. So we'll want to, if necessary, change this. But I'm thinking it may not even be necessary to do it at all because well, we during, are authorized to reimburse, right. get reimbursed okay. if we win. During your research, did you find any, any legislation that, because we can make one phone call to MML and get a sample, if, if, they're, if it's being done, we are they have it on right. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. What the, um, the answer is, the guy who was job it was was on vacation for the last two weeks but called this afternoon, believe it or not, and told us that he wasn't aware of any other municipality who had passed a specific That was law. Jim Peck? No, this guy who works with him. K-O. Caleb. Caleb. Yeah. Okay. Is that I forgot his last name. Is, yeah. ends with a C-H. Okay. It starts with a K. But. Do you think that's because... Because the law is what it is that they can. Yeah, I think this? I think we're going to be okay. able to do this without changing then, then our. Okay. Memory. Well, that's but, even easier. Yeah. Okay. okay. And that's we my just only intention. We'll change our procedures yeah, to make sure that she gets reimbursed as she is entitled mm -hmm. to in this case. Now, if we lose the case, we're not going to be reimbursed. It'll be an expense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because right. they're not guilty right. of the. And that's yeah. something that we would have sought in the ordinance from what right. I'm hearing. Yeah. So we yes. wouldn't, in this case, like the legis like this was written, we wouldn't send a bill. This would be a part of. The court fees for the fee. It would be, be, mm -hmm. court court yes. it would be yeah. just like the court cost. Yeah. And okay. it would just be a so you wouldn't have to sort of like a change. Like, yeah, you wouldn't have to send a bill for this. Just process. put them on notice mm -hmm. if this has to, if you have to yep. be served, you will be charged the okay. $35. Yeah. We'll go. Yeah, that's the only intention just because it's it's getting increasingly more and we're having to do budget transfers and to get that money okay. in there. Okay, good. Hopefully, we won't have to do anything. If we do, just bring back the corrected yeah. documents and we'll talk about it again. Good. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Do you want to do the property? You can do the property first since she's right here and then we'll bring Chief up. up sure. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. The next one is a property donation of 617 West Isabella Street. I was approached by the daughter of Gertrude Shockley. She is the. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's going back. Mm -hmm. That's they going own. All the, way. Um, the family owns 617 West Isabella Street, and it is just a vacant lot that's very odd shaped. It's, it's somewhat like a triangle, it's not buildable. And they just really don't want it anymore. There's no money owing on the property. She just thought that the city would want it. So as soon as she told me who she was and a little bit about her mother, I said, yeah, I think we do want it, especially because of the location. So I did some research. Um, in the cover memo, you'll see some achievements of Ms. Shockley. And then I pulled up, I got with Kim, and I pulled up the ordinance of when she was 
placed on the city council. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all that is attached, and I have the deed when yeah. mm -hmm. she left the property to her family. And I think this lot would be good for a park, a garden, a memorial, something for her. She mm -hmm. was the first African American councilwoman for the city of Salisbury. I think it would be. I said a memory something. garden. Yeah, memory I think it'd be garden. nice for us yeah. to have mm -hmm. a little memory garden with um, a little bench and. Um, is it big enough for a uh, community garden? It is. It is. Uh, but you know, I'm, 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 I have a, I have a, a, I have a pro yeah, I do, and I have a problem with these community gardens because we've got one now that's not being maintained mm -hmm. on um, in the Waterside Park right now. So. I'm just thinking more so like a memory garden where she is a plaque or something or a little mm -hmm. statue or something is put for her in her memory, maybe a little seed and some little flowers and something like that mm -hmm. to be remembered for her to be remembered by. But uh, the community gardens are, I mean, some that are being maintained, but it seems like on our side I, of town, the west side of I town. I would hope, though, that we don't judge yeah. all the community gardens no i didn't ask that for the most part have, on the we west have side seven community gardens that are but providing i'm, I'm tremendous speaking amount for the food. one yeah i'm speaking for the one on our side is not well, being can, properly maintained and, so i'm thinking just put a memory garden for um miss well, gertrude that, and not at a, the right time actual, yeah. at the appropriate time someone will bring a yeah. recommendation mm -hmm. forward yeah. okay great consensus to accept Yep. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. What did I just agree to? <laughs> <laughs> to accept the donate. Accept the donation. Right. Oh, to accept the donation. Oh. Oh yeah. That, uh, property as well. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. That's what we. That's the way we do. He came back too fast. He came <laughs> back from Philly too fast. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. We should get to. We should get like that committee room. together, or in in all honesty, you and Councilwoman Shields and Councilwoman Siggers. And, and a group of, of the women who have served, who served after yeah. her. And, and, and I have talked to there. some some of the ladies in the community that, ha that have served, and so I, I talked with um, Sample who should Delegate Hughes, mm -hmm. and you know, through some things at her, and some things that we would like to do to commemorate Miss mm -hmm. um, Shockley. And I have the phone number for the family. Mm -hmm. um, if, okay. If somebody would like to be Susan, what's it, what's it doing now? Is it just is anybody cutting the grass or anything? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, they are cutting the grass. Because yeah, I rolled by there. About when it would pass, and they're going to maintain it until then. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Susan. Thank you very much. Okay. And, and Jack, I didn't mean any. I didn't mean any offense to the other community gardens, but I can say, speak for the one that is in our community right now that's not being kept up, and, and, and I, I'm not. The issue is being addressed yeah, too, okay. as we you. speak. Thank you. <laughs> Chief. Come on up. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? I'm okay. Good. Get back up and stop. Okay. Um, what am I doing? Where are we? In the community. Well, you, you're going to. With respect to what, I'm, I'm not sure. The Briefing, just like a, where are we uh, from a public safety point of view at this point? Um, the purpose that we, we had discussed um, among ourselves a month ago, I think it was somewhere about a month ago, that um, given the uh, uptick, uptick in, in, in crime, perceived or unperceived, to get some facts about how we're doing uh, year to date and do that maybe on a quarterly basis. So if you could do that, we would appreciate it. No one asked you about this. So I, I understood that you wanted a uh, briefing, but um, I, I'm not exactly sure until now. I, I didn't really realize what it is that um, okay. everyone here was looking for. So. Certainly, I can. Would you work would you be able to do something, something and provide that at the next uh, council meeting? We, um, next if you week? like, I, would I, that be okay? Sure. Is that acceptable to everybody at the council mm -hmm. meeting? So you, I think you, what the mayor had suggested was almost an update 
almost like the it's the stats from <coughs> the staff. Yeah, and and something along the lines of the uh, of the update that's given weekly from the police department online, which is not something. I mean, I can't watch it. Uh, I'm at you know I'm at work, so I think and this was actually his this was actually his suggestion. So I, the maybe the conversation ought to be with him. Councilman, just for reference, they're recorded, so you can watch them. With all of my spare time, time. yes, just, I will. I'm just sharing that they are recorded. The only question I have is the last Safe Streets letter I have sent out is 7-4-2017. Mm -hmm. Are we continuing to do that? Or? We will as soon as we get a new coordinator hired, and okay. we are close to doing that. Right. I mean, I have questions up and down about number of officers, about some of the coalition building, some of those things, but if we'd rather wait no, so that the can. chief is... We can... Yeah, because I think what I expected chief was to show up and, and have, it was my indication from the mayor that she would have stats and papers and things, well, and that's not apparently, and I don't want to put anybody on the spot. Are you not spot. getting the, um, the bi-weekly departmental briefings? No. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. no. Okay. So what I can provide for you today is uh, essentially a snapshot of where we are at this particular point in time based on our last um, department head meeting. That's perfect. Certainly. So as you know, uh, we've had seven homicides to date. In fact, uh, one of our uh, interactive briefings was uh, discussing um, those, those seven homicides. Is there anything I can answer um, for you on those? I can tell you that um, of the seven, two are still open. We are still investigating two of those homicides right now. The other five has been closed by arrest. How many of those involve drugs? Uh, the, the one domestic uh, where we had the uh, infant uh, that was killed, I don't know what uh, drugs, what role drugs played in that. Um, and are you talking about sales? Are you talking about possession? Just, just well, that's involved a pretty broad with drugs. Question. Yes, a pretty broad question. Mm -hmm. But that's the way I meant it. <laughs> broad. It is, uh, it is our position that, they, that there is a nexus with narcotics for the majority of those homicides. Okay. Not that I'm seeking an answer. That, that answer just doesn't actually inform me. Well, what is it that you'd like to know? I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm struggling I, I with it, too. I know. I, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to. That answer just really didn't give me any information in reality saying that a majority of them. And, and it's probably just the fact that you really didn't know what was. Pardon? To another so that we can make sure that you have the answers to the questions you want. That would be my suggestion. I mean, uh, I no the, fight, the, the, other, yeah. the other point of contention here, too, would, is that would, would, um, we do have upcoming prosecutions. So some of these I really can't get into no, detail No, just to close. I thought that you said they were closed. Yeah. Some of the ones that were closed. Closed oh, by, by arrest. arrest. Oh, closed. Yeah, I'm by sorry. Arrest, then. Yeah. That, then, the, then it was inappropriate to ask the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's fine. I mm -hmm. misunderstood. That's my fault. Okay. So I can give you the, the, the stats as of September 3rd. Um, we are uh, inside the city only. Uh, we are down week to week comparison. So if we were going to compare uh, the, the week of uh, August 28th through September 9th of 2016 to 2017, uh, we are tracking 52 crimes in 16 versus 48 part one crimes in 17, which is a, uh, we are negative 7.7%. On the 28 day, if we were compared the same 28 days uh, of uh, August through September, uh, we are down there too. Uh, we are tracking 194 crimes in 2016 and 185 crimes in 2017. We are down uh, negative 4.6%. In the year to date, uh, up to September 3rd, 
In 2016, we're tracking 1,316 Part 1 crimes. In 2017, we were tracking 1,281 Part 1 crimes. We are down negative 2.7%. Two-year comparison, we're down negative uh, 7.7% .7 in a five-year comparison. Comparing to 2012, uh, we are, it's a negative 8.6%. Most of our crime uh, is in the area of theft. We are seeing that across the board and across the city. And most of it is coming from um, items left in Parked vehicles, which are unlocked, um, sheds, uh, and items left uh, unlocked, unsecured on individual uh, properties. Carelessness, to some extent. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Preventable, in a lot well, of cases. Just because you have the opportunity to steal doesn't mean that you should steal. It, that's right. True. It doesn't but make it right. Nexus of theft, there's a certain strong percentage of it that if there's opportunity, somebody has a wallet sitting there that they mm -hmm. forgot or a purse, they're going to grab it. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, uh, there's a thing where you got to be responsible for your own things, make sure you lock up. It's not, you know, I mean, I'm not saying it's their fault. I mean, somebody shouldn't steal, but there is a, a nexus of about 26, 27 percent of thefts are uh, opportunity. Yeah. And I just wanted to say, I didn't mean to seem smarter or glib. It's, it's just that there is there is a big difference between crime that's related to the trafficking of drugs as opposed to drug use being in the proximity of criminal acts because for some people drug use should be thought of as a public health issue and, and sort of contemplating it in the criminal arena may or may not be helpful. And, I, and, and you know, saying that the majority of them did involve drugs, you're, I'm sure, absolutely accurate in your response, but it's not an informative response that could assist anyone in making any sort of informed choices. That, that was my concern. I apologize. Sure. I no, no worries. Um, the, um, in response to these theft issues, uh, we have been successful. Uh, we uh, discovered a, uh, a large problem in the Doverdale area uh, where individuals were having lawn items, um, you know, for, for maintenance, yard maintenance being um, stolen and then sold on the app Let Go. Um, so mm -hmm. we were we were able to um, make a significant arrest there. The um, individuals we have we have learned they've they've moved on to other items. Uh, just recently, we found a, a bicycle uh, that had been uh, placed onto let go and, and was being sold. Um, so we, we did we did have a, a media campaign uh, that we put out regarding these items regarding that particular usage of the app and uh, cautioning individuals not to purchase items from individuals who they would consider to be juveniles in particular, or if the price seemed to be too good for the item. Uh, we also incurred, further encouraged the use of our e-commerce exchange zone out in front of headquarters, and we offered uh, individuals to come in and have the items checked um, by our staff, not to determine whether or not the item could be stolen, uh, because we would have no way of knowing until the actual owner reported it as such, but at least we would be able to, uh, if someone did report the item stolen, we'd be able to verify that, and then we'd be able to have some type of a record in the event that it later became reported stolen. Um, of late, we've had been uh, working through a lot of quality of life issues in the Camden area. Uh, some of those do revolve around theft. Others are revolving around um, just general noise and um, uh, a lot of accumulation of garbage uh, as, as individuals uh, make their way to and from our downtown area. So we've been working on that particular problem as well. Um, but I think that's pretty much that's good. a good snapshot. Um, Is there, are there other issues you'd like me to address? I didn't have an issue, Mr. Council President. I just. I was more interested in the structure that we have in place and the conversations that we're having with neighboring agencies. And I have questions about that, but since I don't know what structure we're using now, and that doesn't, just if we all get together later on, it would be nice to be able to see what that structure is and how that structure is working 
whether or not that structure needs any more legislative, any more funding, any of those things. I think one of the concerns was the staff level. Well, I had a number of sworn officers, but that's a question right. I'm going to ask Chief every time I'm on the phone with her, and she'll okay. smile and give me a number, and I'll say something, and she'll say something, and then we'll go get coffee. And <laughs> so, how can I answer your question about structure? What is it? Well, no, I can't. I don't have any questions about it until I see what the structure looks like. I mean, what we're doing with the coordinating agencies. I, I have. The sheet that I have in front of me is the structure that I had when I was mayor, and it is the safe street structure. And I just have questions about every each and every one of these particular agencies that we partnered with in the past. If we're still partnering with them, how's that working? Is there still cross border across Virginia, across Delaware? Is there still instant communication? But that's but without a structure, the I don't have any questions. Safe street structure is still a good model, so we're right. still operating under that that model because it works and. Um, we're not siloed, you know, we're still exchanging information. Um, we have our Safe Streets unit up and running. Uh, they're, they're working um, to coordinate with individuals where we see cross-border crimes happening, right. uh, for example, with the dirt bikes or with these, the, with these thefts. Right. Is the um, apprehension team still working out of? Yes. Out of the old <coughs> fire? Yes. On Isabella, okay. Yes. So the, I don't believe the structure has changed from what I recall, although I don't see what you're looking at, but there, there have been no significant changes in our structure as far as it relates to the Safe Streets process. I guess one question I have, and this is just kind of, I know in the past it was an issue when <clears throat> things happen in the schools, uh, you know, with the sheriff's office and their resource officer, are, are they, What's the timeline where they're reporting stuff to you that, hey, this happened, we know some of these kids are city residents? Because I know on my street one day something happened a couple of years ago and we ended up with about 30 people at one house looking to beat up on this one mm -hmm. girl who mm -hmm. happened to not be there, but it had spilled over from school. Right. Um, How is that? Is there, is there some communication there so you guys know that there was an issue, there might be an issue, instead of when you get there mm -hmm. you're already a couple hours behind on what had happened. Right, so uh, assuming that the uh, SROs uh, have timely information, they, they share it with us if it's going to become an issue in the neighborhoods, um, and they're, they're decent about that. We have okay. a good working relationship with the SROs, and then the Safe Streets unit, they work closely with them as well. Okay. Because you know, a lot of the issues will happen outside of school hours, so we try to relay that information yeah. over. Okay. Definitely. Thank you. Is the Safe Streets money or did we put in the budget the things that we were doing with the Poplar Hill pre-release with the the gaining of employment and the skills it was painting it was drywall um, it so was yeah traffic control and direction you know flagger right. uh, and drywall flooring um, so are they still doing graduations or we see no Poplar Hill actually has closed down so they, they moved that over to um, the ECI, and so that's all got to be regenerated down there. And as far as my recollection of our budget here internally, I don't believe we budgeted that for that this round. Okay. But that, as you recall, had been moved out of safe streets and under the city city umbrella. Right. So that's a, probably an addition there. And then who did we I get I don't know as how a old that U.S. attorney is. when? Rosenstein left for some kind of pasture. Some kind of pasture? Some kind of pasture, wherever he went. I know where he went. I just can't describe it in a way. Do we know who, <coughs> who did we get? He's the, I believe he's the assistant attorney general now for the U.S. Yeah, that's um, a pasture. He's definitely in a pasture. I don't, I don't know the name of the actor, and I don't know that anybody's been named permanently Anybody yet. named permanently yet? I could be wrong, but... I know that they had an actor, I just can't recall. Because so many times we talked about if it was a particular type of gun crime in these mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. and where the level went to push it up to. Correct. If it gets, it depends on whether or not the, um, we would, we would uh, prosecute locally on the state side or, or federally. There were, there were a number of factors that would have to be viewed and weighed 
to make that determination. That's still in play. So I guess my question really, it just, back in the day, you know, we had sheets of people who we were following up on, sheets mm -hmm. of people who were coming out, sheets of people who we did everything we could in the first 72 hours that they were out because that's when something's going to repeat mm -hmm. to make sure that the cooling period was there and people could move on. Mm -hmm. We're doing that. Yes, that, that's still in play along with um, drug court. Uh, and we uh, just had a meeting last week with um, juvenile services uh, to, to uh, since they had a change in staff there, uh, to reinstitute some of the some of the programs that we have going. Anything else? Mr. Russo, anything? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I so, love graphs. You know, when you, we were throwing out those okay. numbers. Do you have any of that stuff graphed? Because um, I'm, trends are very good, as long as the scale stays the same. But not that I'm asking <clears throat> for them now. But I can. If you could. I can. Do some graphs. No, and just. Where Where is the link to the briefing? No, I, I'm just saying that because when we hear it's it might be able to find it on Twitter. It's crazy and you off the. You guys do Facebook Live or Twitter? Which one is it? Or Periscope? We have Facebook or Periscope. And it's 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 on Twitter. Uh, it's the Periscope. Jim's on Twitter. That's, so that's so it populates on Twitter and then it rolls over to Facebook Live. Um, for a sense of immediacy, though, we could pull right right now. We can pull up CrimeReports.com. And take a look at some graphs, if you like. No, I think I, th I think that's fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Chief. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Sure. Councilman, we'll happily send you the YouTube link for the weekly. Uh, yeah, just I'd, I'd like to be able to. Briefings yeah. as they are. I can't. I'm I'm deaf in this yeah. ear, so you're going to have to speak like loudly. Oh. Um, we will send you the YouTube links after our weekly press briefings, public safety press perfect. briefings. That's perfect. So by <clears throat> noon on Tuesdays, you will have them. Fantastic. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. The last formal item on the agenda is um, a couple weeks ago, we had a presentation and a uh, request to look at legislation for a balloon launch ban and I said that we would put it on the agenda and it is on the agenda for discussion um, any comments about it questions um, I think anything that we do I mean it would have to be in joint with the county mm -hmm. because of the squiggly lines I, I mean it's it's it, it's been in front of the county. Uh, at, I was at last week's meeting, and it was it was brought up at last week's meeting as well. They have not had a, a work session on it yet, but they do have the they documentation. They do have the information. They had the same presentation yeah. as we did. Because and I think if it was a countywide, I think it'd be more appropriate if it was in our situation if it was a countywide ordinance because. You know, I mean, somebody could release something in the county. If we could ban it in the city, but if they're still going to do one, they can go on the other side of the street and do it. So, you know, I mean, that's the. But, okay. Uh, it, it, is the party interested in this uh, ordinance, President? Yes. Mm -hmm. is, 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 is this more symbolic in nature? Because I think it would be very difficult to enforce. You come up to the yeah. you come up to the podium. <coughs> And I mean, I have no problem if it is symbolic, but no, I'm just. Not at all. It's very literal. <laughs> it's very literal. And to address your concerns, uh, the city of Ocean City, the town of Ocean City, has banned it. Worcester County has not. I do hope to go before Worcester County Board as well, yeah. Health Council as well. So it, it does tend to get stuck with local municipalities. And then Should spray out. But for that point, you know, I can. 
it can be banned in Sussex County, but fly over here to Wicomico County. So ban it nationwide, that'd be awesome. But you are going to get litter going somewhere else, as you know, going well, back in somebody I think else's the issue backyard. That, the issue that Mr. Voda uh, was talking about is we have areas inside the city limits that are county. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Which litter is litter. It should be banned yeah. within the kid city as well as the county, and that's how Ocean City has termed it. It is within the littering ordinance. It's not a separate balloon mm -hmm. release ban. It is just considered litter. And and your question, sir. I, I mean it very literal. It's not symbolic. How is it? <laughs> how is it to be enforced then? For an example. God and bless I'm, her, you, but you know, if you hear of a mass release about to happen, like happened back in July, 200 balloons were released from Bennett Stadium. Yeah. Worthwhile cause, but if you had heard that that was going to happen, it should be addressed with the organizers of that vet and say, mind you, this is an illegal activity. Maybe you want to try to find a different way to celebrate the occasion. Um, and, and if you look at the ordinances that I did provide you from other cities and states, uh, there is a limit to it. You know, there's there will be a limit to 10 balloons released or something because you can't. If a kid releases a helium balloon by accident, you're not going to throw him in jail. So um, every city and state did put different stipulations on what they considered as the illegal limit of the activity. So that would be up to the council what you felt found was appropriate. Um, can you release anything under 50 balloons and that's fine? That would be discussion for the council. Why balloons are not single use plastic bags? Are we talking about like the, the lanterns? No, the, uh, I'm talking about oh, t-shirt sure. plastic okay. bags that people are using because balloons are an issue, but comparatively speaking, and I'm just curious, I'm just curious why identify this as opposed to the single-use plastic bags? Is it because single-use plastic bags would be too controversial for people? No, we can try to ban them too. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of took this on because it's so vital to our sea creatures. You know, we, yeah. this area lives off of our water life and it is killing birds and turtles and, and fish. And, uh, and I'm not opposed I'm sure to it, but bags and, and do the too. example you gave is, is a good example because it would be easy to tell a school okay, we don't celebrate this way anymore. We have to celebrate mm -hmm. a different way. It's easy to tell large organizations that. I just think it will be difficult to police because once the balloons are up in the air, how do you prove who released them? And, and the drift of it is. So, right. So, If you could just put it, say the, say the city council does go forward with the proposed ban this evening, Tomorrow morning in the Daily Times, it is now illegal to do this. Please don't do it. Find alternative methods. So you have announced it to the public. Yeah, you're not going to stop them all, but it is on the books. If somebody does, you know that they're going to release a thousand balloons and they do it despite this being a law, then you get to say something to the organizers, I guess. I mean, not every law is totally enforceable either. So is littering. Does, do the cops throw, throw the cigarette smokers in jail because there's cigarette butts all over the place? No, they should, but. I, I was just saying if you had any ideas, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not necessarily for it, but then I would raise the question again, why not single use plastic bags? That seems well, like that'll a That'll be next issue. week. Next See week? next week. I'll be here. Okay. We'll talk about it. Well. <laughs> One step at a time. <laughs> What's everybody's feeling? I would like to see what the county plans to do because I think, you know, anything the county would do would be all-encompassing and it really wouldn't matter if we did it or not. If, if, if the county didn't move forward with it, then we wouldn't really need to do anything with it because a county ordinance does cover all municipalities. Uh, I like the idea and, uh, of the city saying we are opposed to mass balloon releases because yeah. it is ultimately. Well, I mean, it's, what would be the penalty? You know, I mean, the what, what I'm saying is there's no, there's no. I mean, if it was a state law, we wouldn't need to. You know, there, so there's a, uh, you know, if the, if it's at and, and it may very well be something that. But this you know, becomes our opportunity to influence the trend. Mm -hmm. it, it does, but if somebody, if the county is going to do it, there's no need for us to do it. So, so I, I would like to wait the county, to see. I would like to wait to I, see. I did the, present it last okay. week. Yeah, right. I would like to see what the county would do mm -hmm. before we move forward. Yeah, because they encompass us all. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's no there's no need for duplication. Yeah, yeah. So. 
Well, I mean, there's the legislative well, history that would indicate that both administrative parties, if they did choose to do it, both parties, it came to a vote, and we could see where people landed. So, at that if, time the, if the county does, if the county it does it and we do it, and their fine is higher than the city's. Well, well where do you if, want if the county were to do it, I would suspect the county's rule would supersede ours. Oh, no. Yes. No. No. Well, I would imagine that if the county did it, it would have to be on a complaint basis for the one in code enforcement officer that they have. <laughs> no, so but. I just. You're so smart. No, but the. I want to call Peyton and tell him that the balloons are getting ready to go off downstairs and he's got to go do it. It's really no, the sheriff's office would enforce it. Well, can I also what, say under, that the city has the stash your trash littering. program? Yeah. The city has a huge anti-littering. Yeah. I am on the yeah. Chamber's Beautification Committee. So the city has a huge effort with littering. So why does the city have an effort with littering when it's illegal in the county as well? So you got to look at it that way, too. I think this will be a cultural indicator ordinance that will kind of say, as a county, we are environmentally conscious. Because I, I, don't, I don't, you know, just like litter, we really don't see how it's going to be enforced, but it does help to have uh, laws that say... Don't litter. I, I think from a practical point of view, we just had the chief sitting here and we just went over all of the issues that we're trying to resolve with the resources that we have. And one of the concerns I have is where do you, I mean, where would you want, where do you want your resources applied? Uh, do you want our police to go around? And I don't mean this negatively, but in case of a tie, who wins? Then You've why do you a, have any anti-littering laws on the books at all? Well, I mean, I, I agree with you. I mean, I, it's you go down and you drive behind a car and you have somebody flicking yeah. cigarette butts mm -hmm. on the street and they don't consider that littering. What do you do? Do you have one of our officers, when he sees somebody do that, go up and take his time from his patrol to issue a ticket? That's a real dilemma. It is. It is. It I is think a we're talking dilemma. about mass releases, though, rather than one balloon and one cigarette thing. If there's littering laws, like I said, Ocean City just rolled the word balloon into its anti littering ordinance. Yeah. Okay, so what would be a mass to you? What would be the number for a mass for you? Well, the example I gave one of the states that has banned it, it's um, 50. Uh, you know, it, it's up to this, the. Council, I don't know, 20, 50, I don't know. This is a small area, so you're not going to get a mass gathering of a million people releasing <laughs> like balloons. So I, I, I just don't think that this is. Because my thing is, even if, you, if you're saying the, the mass is 50, so if somebody does 49 balloons, do you still think that that's not going to contaminate the waterways? Oh, I do. And I would like to yeah. see no bans, a ban on all releases, but. It, it doesn't seem like the council is ready to say that, so then put a limit on it. That's what other yeah. municipalities have said. So just going with precedents in other areas, that's how they've dealt with it. Okay. Well, the proposal I heard was, the only proposal I heard from the council is to check and see what the county is doing. <laughs> I, will call, I will commit to calling the president of the county council, and I will tell them that we are awaiting their decision and if they would like input, we're, we're residents of the county as well, and we can give our opinion to the county. Okay. And we'll go from there. How's that? Following. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have consensus. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other issues from the uh, council? Okay. Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you.